Hey everyone, it's Daphne from Scrap and Create and we're working on page seven. Page seven is going to be the same as page two, but a mirror image. So the flaps are gonna change uh, direction. So one of them is a regular flap and one of them is an extended flap. And I have to think about it. The regular flap is gonna be on the right hand side. The extended flap that's going to have an extension with a photo mat on it is going to be on the left hand side. So I remember to put magnets here so I don't forget and cover this before I figure out what I need to do with my magnets. I think. <clears throat> Maybe not. Anyway, so we are going to start um, by laying in these two strips. This is from the 8x8 collection. And uh, these strips are going to go right on the left and right hand edges of our 8x10 pocket page. And um, then we're going to inset by a half inch um, the flaps. So let's go ahead and put this down first. These have already been inked. And as I mentioned previously, I'm using Powder Puff. The color is mahogany. There we go. Let me make sure. We're on page seven, I was just making sure it's right side up. I wrote the numbers on the other side. Not that it matters right now because there's nothing on the other side, but I like to just get in the habit of always looking on the flip side so I don't accidentally put something in upside down, which I have done in the past, and that can be very heartbreaking. <laughs> okay, I just want to make sure these are both going the same direction. Okay, mm, is that it? Yep, that is. <clears throat> Nala just came to see me. I think her dad is outside working on his Jeeps. Anyway, there we go. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is install our left and right flaps. And these are four and a half by eight, four and a half by eight. We're going to come in a half inch from each side and right there is a mark right there is a mark and I've done it on the top too to help me put these in at the right location and this is supposed to go over and that's because I want it completely under this flap I was just dry fitting it real quick to make sure I'm not going to have anything hanging over the edge. Perfect. Okay, there's one. Is it? Yes, it is. <laughs> Sometimes I say that and then I check it and it's not quite. Let's check. Make sure it's. Yep. Yeah. So it's cut right, so all I have to do is get it in and scrolled right. There we go. Okay, so again, these are four and a half by eight. I'm gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. You'll need two of those. So that's pretty straightforward. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to install the lower pocket, which is right here and right here. There's gonna be one on each side. These pockets are five by five, five by five. You're gonna score a half inch on three sides. And when you're done, you're going to have a finished pocket of four inches by four and a half. So it's a little bit taller than it is wide. <clears throat> so when you're installing this pocket, let me get a contrast. It's it's supposed to fit perfectly here, but if for some reason it's a little bit wider, move it out to the edge because if it's over here, this flap won't operate quite correctly. So if you have, if it's off just a tiny fraction, move it toward the center 
away from your hinge. So the hinge will operate smoothly. You can see I'm off just a tiny bit, but that's okay. And none of that's gonna show up once we get all our paper on. So there's one, let's do the next one. And it's really hard to get it precise because you're talking about papers that have scores and folds in them. And a score line will take up a different amount of paper if you cut it or if you score it on the grain than if you score it against the grain. So if you really, really want to be precise, just make sure you're doing both exactly the same and do lots of checking. And this one turned out a little bit tighter, but they're both very, very much within uh, an acceptable range. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna install a flap on each side. These flaps are four by four and a half, four inches across, four and a half inches tall. You're gonna score a half inch on the four and a half inch side. You're gonna go flush with the top. Same thing for the flap. Um, you want it to go flush with this side, but if there's anything hanging over the hinge here, it will interrupt um, how the uh, flap opens and closes. So if you have any overage, you push it toward the center. Okay, there's one, and then the second one goes here. Looks good. <clears throat> Now we have another set of flaps. This flap is a little bit smaller. This is three and a half by four and a quarter. Three and a half by four and a quarter. You're going to score a half inch on the four and a quarter inch side. It's gonna get centered. So I haven't marked my center yet. Mark the center of each of these flaps, the center of each of these flaps, and that will be our guide uh, to hold to um, for installation. The, um, the tape backing makes, makes the flap slide. Okay. okay, now we just mark, take that mark and this mark, line them up and install our flap. Basically, it should have a very even border once it's laid in. There we go. Okay, and um, I already went ahead and made my two inserts. So I'm going to show you the ephemera cards that I chose. So I chose this uh, small ephemera card and this is the flip side. And of course, these are gonna go right here inside the pockets to hold those flaps down. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is install, no, we have to put paper down. So I'm gonna take a quick break, organize, and I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, sorry about the break there. Um, I had to get my head wrapped around a couple of things. So 
we are ready to actually this needs to go over here start decorating so <laughs> sorry got tape all over me I went ahead while I was away and added these magnets for fear I would forget again. So they're here on the inside. The mates won't get attached until we do the extended flap on the inside. So there we go. Okay, so now we have um, these pockets in. And I gotta remember what my paper looked like. I think this is what I was doing. This. And. I can't remember. Maybe it was solid gold up. That looks right. And then the white on the bottom. Uh, another pocket goes here. Yeah, that's starting to look right. Maybe I was using the print. That looks awfully busy, doesn't it? I hate it when I do this. So the other option would be gold down, print up. Oh, I should have taken a picture before I deconstructed it. So my hesitation here is I don't like solid to solid, which is what this version would look like. Solid to solid and then a pattern here. And then this would be the alternative. Yeah, oh, these are two different ones. <laughs> so I'd have to cut a different one. Well, I wouldn't have to, but, um, hmm. And then the other way would be there we go, solid red. Print on the bottom, solid on the top. Now remember, we're going to have an insert. So for the most part, that's what it's going to look like. Which I kind of like, so we can look at it this way it would look like like this i'm really not liking that so i think i'm going to go with the solid red on the bottom decision made then we'll figure out the rest in a few minutes okay so we're going to go solid red on the bottom There is a slight pattern. I just want to make sure they're both going the same way. It's very slight. And then, of course, we're going to have another layer on top of it. So, okay. Okay, so the next thing is this pocket. Now, um, as we talked about, I'm going to put some a magnet. I, I need a I have it right here. I was gonna see. I need a magnet. And I have this, so that'll just hold everything in place. So the we want to install this slightly below so that it's easy to get our insert in. So I'm gonna use this to hold everything in place. And then I'm gonna come down about an eighth of an inch and install this. Ah, maybe a little more so that I have an even border all the way around. And what is that border? Looks like about, I have so much stuff that my, my ruler's gonna hit something. Um, from this black to this black is about a quarter inch. So I think that's what I'll do. 
just so there's a perfect frame around the lower pocket. Hey Nala, what's going on girl? She's wandering around. All right, hope everybody's doing well. I just wanna thank everybody so much for taking time to um, come over here to Scrap and Create and share your time with us. It really means a lot to us. We hope that if you are in the market, Nala says thanks. If you're in the market for any of the papers that you see here, that you come on over and give us a shot over at www.scrapandcreate.com. And if you would, if you know, if this is not necessarily style like the um, the tutorials, but you want to use alternate paper, I understand that. That's fine. But if you could share us with other like-minded crafters, I would really appreciate that. That that really helps us in the algorithm, um, and it helps promote us as. Um, as a channel so that other like-minded scrappers can find us. So yeah, so we're doing really good. We've got lots of subscribers. I mean, it's just one measurement tool, um, but we are um, past 20,000 subscribers and uh, we owe all that to you. So thanks, thanks again for tuning in. Now I know I've had kind of a rough couple of weeks between being sick, having family in town, my son getting his wisdom teeth taken out, um, just many things up in the air. Um, and I'm finally getting surgery on the back of my ear for those of you that were concerned about it. <laughs> it's benign, um, but I'm going to go ahead and have that removed. And uh, just lots of life things getting in the way, but I'm trying to ramp up. This um, This will be out Friday. I think it's the third. Uh, what's the day? Let's see. No, it's not the third, Friday the 5th of August. And then I'm gonna try real hard to get a couple of projects out the following week. Um, one Stamparia and one Chow Bella, I think, before I get back to Graphic 45, which tends to be larger projects just because the amount of paper that comes in a bundle and you know the, the number of uh, patterns and ouch solids that you get. So they tend to be a little bit bigger. So I'll do a couple of smaller, smaller meaning um, less flaps and folds, but they might still be eight and a half by eight and a half, not likely to be eight by 10. Okay, now we're gonna use this. Let's make sure, yeah, we've got both of these. Cool. Well, I'm sorry, before we do that, let's go ahead and put this print down. Here it is. Um, there we go. Anyway, just to give you kind of a heads up of what's going on. Yeah. Oh, and if you haven't, um, go on over to Facebook, um, search for Scrap and Create Group, and there's a group of people over there that um, share their projects uh, using Graphic 45, Chow Bella, Stamperia, Blue Fern. And then we have a new collection. I think it's called Asuka, a new uh, brand. Um, and I'm anxious to do something with that paper just because I haven't done anything with it yet uh, so that I can give you guys a review. And then I'd really like to do something with Blue Fern again. I love that paper. It is so luxurious. I love Graphic 45 patterns, but that, um, that Blue Fern paper is just ugh, to die for. Beautiful patterns and just great weight in your hand, the texture. Okay, there we go. I think we're up to date on measurements, but I, we aren't up to date on patterns. So that's patterns and solids, patterns and solids. This is from the 12 by 12. I think I forgot to mention that. Okay, so what are we gonna do here? There we there we go back to that solid and two solids. So I think I might have to give this a little bit of thought. So that's the current plan. And oh. 
yeah, it's not going all the way down. It's catching on the, there it goes, catching on the bottom of the pocket. So that is certainly one option. So I'm going to leave it there just to look at for a little bit. And then, and I, I like it because it winds up being a frame around this. Um, I wish I had a super tight gold pattern, but I don't. And I, I told, I mentioned this before, but I'm really not happy with the red because this, it, it's supposed to look like gold, but to me it looks like yellow. So I struggle with it. So I'm not using very much of that. I did cut a circle for the next part. So I'm just going to set that aside for a moment. So we'll open this up. So now we're going to add our extended flap. Now, as you may or may not recall, I'll pull in page two. Here's page two. It opens to the left and then we have this extended flap on the right hand side. And there's um, a, a three by five that I use to attach it. I'm going to do something, you can still do that, and I, I left the 3 by 5 instructions in the cut list because you may or may not have a circle punch. But for the next page, just to do something a little bit different, I am going to use this circle, which is 3.5. I used this tool, which... Uh, Martha Stewart or Fiskars make something similar. This is superior. It's less expensive and it just cuts much nicer um, and it, your paper doesn't slip around underneath it. So we don't sell it, but it's a really good tool and I just found it on Amazon. So Lion EVR Round, Ever Round. And uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And then inside of it, um, it also comes with this uh, translucent um, model so that you can sort of determine um, what size circle you want. So you can kind of lay it out and decide what size circle you want. And then just like in the Martha Stewart, uh, this tool slides in and out to change the diameter of the circle. So that's my two minute ad for Ever Round, not sponsored, just happy with the tool. Um, and I've got punches for circles, but not for this large. And then I also have die cuts um, or dies, um, but I just didn't feel like hauling out my uh, Sizzix machine and blah, you know what I mean, all my dies. So I'm gonna attach the two. So one of them is an extension that gets adhered directly to this panel. And then the other one, is attached like this so that when you open this one these go with each other I'm going to use this circle to join them I just thought it might be a little bit more interesting and I'm going to actually have it lay on top so it's going to look like that uh, centered and then when you open it this will um, part of this photo mat will have this circle in it which I thought might make it look interesting if you're going to do let's see that's four, let's do three and a half. A three and a half by three and a half photo, or two three and a half, three and a half. Um, you would have this circle slightly behind it, which I think looks kind of cool. So anyway, that's my current plan. So as you'll recall on page two, or you may not, um, I forgot to put magnets under this before I covered it. So I haven't done that yet. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is decorate these, these two. Um, and then once I've done that, then I can adhere this. And then once this is attached, we can figure out the spacing uh, right here. So, once that's done, I'll get it spaced and we'll have the circle in here. Then I can um, add my magnets here. Okay, so I'm not going to um, adhere this until all that's done. So uh, back to the plan, which is get these two covered. Okay, I'm going to organize. I'll be right back. Okay, everyone, I'm going to start laying in the paper here. This is from the 12 by 12 collection pack, and I used the whole span of the 12 by 12, and these were supposed to be equal pieces on the left and right, and they're not, because <laughs> I messed up, but it's still, it's still going to look fine. Um, it'll just, it'll be a little bit more interesting, I think. 
So I am going to lay the solid piece in the middle. And you have to use a 12 by 12 if you want solid because the span between the two hinges is nine inches. So we're going to lay this in and, um, and then I'm going to continue the pattern on to the next page. And then I'm either going to use green or red, depending on kind of where I am in using up the colors um, to add to the other side or to the middle. I haven't decided, so I need to fill those gaps. So let's take a look. Oh, I just wish that was more gold or ivory would have been a good, better choice. Now that looks too busy. So let's go with, um, let's take a test drive of the red and the green. So that would be with green. Of course it would go the whole span. And this is with red. The red is much more cheerful. Red it is. Okay, I think I've got a piece here that's going to work out for me. So I'm going to go ahead and start by laying this in and then um, measuring the outside to fit. Okay, let's see how this works. Just happened to be a strip scrap I had. And how about that? That's pretty darn good. I'll take it. And then we'll measure the last piece over here. Okay, we need a strip here. I'm going to go through my scraps real quick. I don't want to cut through a sheet if I don't have to. That's not white enough. You want to make sure that whatever you're putting over here is white enough to cover your, um, your magnets so you don't have anything revealed in the color blocking. And of course, this is going to be fine. You're going to have plenty of room. Okay, I don't think I've got any small. I'm trying to save some of my larger pieces to. Nope. Got to cut through this one. Let's make sure I'm going the same direction. Not that it really matters. They're so far apart. It's really hard to tell. This is it. Okay. So I'm going to do a rough cut and then I'm going to do. Um, Trim it down. The reason I do a rough cut is because I really want to see the top and bottom when I decide how uh, much I need to trim off for the color blocking. Not a lot.
this is going to make for a really pretty photo array. You can put a little caption down here. It's going to look pretty. Okay, so now we are on to the insert. Okay, so this goes with this. So this is going to get tacked down to this flap. But I have to think about that. And then remember, we're going to put some magnets here. So I think what I'm going to do, I had to go over this a couple of times in my mind, is the last time I didn't reveal what was attached, it went under uh, the designer paper like that, but I want to reveal this. So I think what I want to do is figure out how much of a gap, and I think I need about a quarter inch between the two. And I'm just going to eyeball it. I think that's about right. And based on that, attach this first because it's going to be partially under the flap, if that makes sense. And it will in just a second. I promise. Whoops. Ah! I hate it when that happens. You know what? Uh, I'm not going to be happy with that. So I'm going to wind up cutting another piece of paper. Gosh, that's irritating. Right now, I'm just trying to eyeball the location of this half circle. And I'm using my grid to help me with that. oriented right needs to go over a little more I think that's it okay very good I think I'm going to be happy with that okay now when I have this down I put a couple of pencil marks where I want this to land when I when I glue these things together. And I just noticed that this is not straight. That's better. The warm wishes was not straight when I was looking at it. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm coming just below, just below that mark. So the reason I want to do that is I want to see the whole um, stub revealed when the flap is closed. Okay, instead of like that, where it, I don't know, for something for some reason when I look at that, it reminds me of um, sort of Asian architecture or whatever. So I want to see the whole stub, and that's an odd way of saying it. It looks more, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, I can't think, I can't think of it. It's an architecture style. Retro is what's coming up, but that's not what I mean. Okay, so I know I need glue from here down. This didn't have to be so big, but it just makes it that much stronger. By the way, I decided to go with black here. Okay, now I'm gonna eyeball it um, top to bottom. Try to center it. That looks pretty close. Okay, and let's see how did this turn out. Actually, uh, no, I can see it, so I don't like it. <laughs> so let me see if I can find some more of that pattern. Mm. 
I hope. I thought I had some more of it. Yes, I do. Okay, so this needs to be four by seven. Or three and seven eighths by six and seven eighths. Because it needs to be matted. And I'll have to set that aside so I don't accidentally use it without examining it uh, and where it's going. It would work as a mat somewhere. If I was going to put, oops, almost the wrong side, something else on top of it, it would be, it would distract from the glue or potentially cover the glue. Ooh, I need a break for lunch, dinner pretty soon. Just want to make sure it's going the same direction. Okay. That's good. Okay, so I'm laying it in here just to get a look and put a couple of tick marks on where I want it to go. And those will, those will show even after I put the designer paper down. Okay, now comes the hard part. How do I hold that all in place while I find my magnets? I'm going to use my magnetic ruler to hold all this in place. I've got a magnetic pad here. Hold that all in place. That looks great. So now I'm going to slide this over. Let's get this stuck on something figure out where my magnets are. Right about here. Okay. You could use temp temporary tape or something like that to hold it all in place too. I'm going to straighten it out one more time since I've been sliding it around. This magnet is really strong. So the gap I want is about a quarter inch. Could be a little more, a little less. What I'm trying to do is expose the, um, the hole of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? There we go. It looks like it's right on. What do they call it? Uh, pump, uh, stub. ready to decorate this. Maybe. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to find my location again. Use my that's upside down. Use my um, ruler to hold it in place. I'm going to open this panel, put glue behind the circle, press it into place, and we'll be done until we decorate the flip side. Actually, you know what I did? Put the magnets on the wrong side because the paper's upside down. Shoot, why can't I deal with this? Sorry about that. Really, all we needed to do was line up the magnets. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna flip my paper over. Line up the magnets, put glue over here. <laughs> And there it is. So that's disappointing, but it's really insignificant. Um, the pattern is so busy, it's hard to see. So while we're here, let's go ahead and add these. I like this much better. Um, I was trying to do some gold on gold, and it was just, I keep trying to add the gold and cream because this collection is very dark. By the way, these inserts are double thick um, because there's going to be a color block on, on it and because you're going to be putting it into a pocket. It wants to fold right here at the end of this. I'm going to add some uh, designer cardstock here, but even still it wanted to fold here, so I just made it double thick. So it's two layers of 65 pound. Okay. There we go. So we'll need to put a little strip in here and add some paper here. And I have this piece of leftover sticker. I used part of it on the cover, and that's what I'm going to use right here. I'm just going to mark where I need to trim it. Peel that little bit up and trim it. little more. That wasn't a very straight cut. I think I'll glue it down. Perfect. I don't always use my stickers. I I forget. Well, embellishing is just, it's very time consuming. I like it, but it really slows down my production. So you guys have to let me know in the comments below. Would you rather have um, a, two albums a month or one and a half albums a month with more embellishment? Um, because adding the embellishments, especially per page, it, it really is time consuming. Okay, so now, but I'm okay with either one. I kind of miss doing the embellishment because uh, I just don't get to it anymore. So let's find some paper to go here. So this is already very, very dark. What are we gonna do? Well, I have this <laughs> that I messed up from before. So we could do that and it pulls this trim in. Um, and I have another one right here. What do you guys think? It's a lot. I think I'm going to do it. Let's do it.
the other thing we could no we can't do that now okay okay i kind of like the circle idea um yeah okay that's what i'm gonna do uh this was repurposed and then this is the one i had a little bit of glue on it's not on the a side so i'm okay with that the b sides or the insides are really meant to be where the photos are so it's likely that this will get covered I like this pattern. It doesn't look very Christmassy to me, but I like it. So if you have any left over, I think you could use it in a lot of different ways. Here we go. Now, we need to do the insides of the flaps and the pocket liner and the balance of these uh, inserts. And then also there's a large insert that goes inside the bigger pocket. So there's a lot going on in this page. So yeah, I'm glad I straightened the warm wishes. It looks better. I think I'm going to try to reintroduce this pattern. Let me see if I've got some small bits of that. Mm. And I definitely want to use this. Maybe we'll do that here. Yeah, I like it. The red and gold, not my favorite, so I'm going to save it for the insides. And I like to cut it side by side, so if you push them together, you've got a continuing pattern. It's not, it's not that important, but I like it. Shifted on me a little bit. Yep. Okay. And then really don't need to trim the well. I'm gonna trim a little off the top because you can see that white band. That'll fit right into the pocket. And then what do we want to do next? I want this pattern. I'm trying to use my small pieces so I don't have to cut through the sheet again. So this, it's really easy to take the notch out of the wrong side. So take a look at your patterns. I like to match them up. It's not really critical, but I like it. Okay, so this is gonna be notched on the top.
and that's not right. <laughs> I cut the paper wrong, dum dum. Okay, well I wasted that. I forgot this is not square. All right, well we have a we have some more of that, and it's the right size, twelve by twelve. And let's uh, let's take a minute and measure this so I don't do that again. So the height is three and three quarters. And width. Now that's right. scraps. Lots of um, perfect sizes for carts. Pick. Once in a while, I get in a brush and my corner chomper doesn't chomp right. That was one of those times. This one looks okay. these in. Not going to ink the leading edge, also not going to add glue to it because it's going to slide right in the pocket. on the leading edge. It's okay, it just makes it a little harder to push it in. Okay, two more pieces. What are we going to do here? What do we want to pull back in? I like that. Maybe that's what we do. No, I was going to say maybe we pull the cream back in, but that won't work. So pattern, pattern, pattern. There's too much solids here. We need something colorful up here. Or dark. Which would be... That would work. Mm, well, maybe not. Um... Thank you. 
What do you guys think? How about this one? That or this? I'm not crazy about either one. We could also just pull a solid red back in. I'm not crazy about that either. But again, this is really where photos are supposed to go. Oh, I don't know. What do you guys think? That seems like an awful lot of red. I think I'm going to go with this. Now it's this or this. The one that has more black. Goes this way. This is a long one, isn't it? That's right, the next one's not, not very complicated. Okay, so we've got a couple things left, and it'll go pretty quickly. We need to put something on the bottom half of both of these, and I don't know what I'm going to do here. Uh, since we're doing so much red here, maybe red. The other option, zah, green and gold. Let's do gold. Okay, I'm just going to make it the same width as um, what am I do with my pencil. Same width as the ephemera card, which is not quite four inches. I need that. Maybe it rolled off or threw it away or. Well, good grief. What did I do with it? Here it is. Underneath the corner chamber. Okay, so I'm just going to line this up. Come down and mark it. You know what? I think 
Uh, no, I won't. I'm just going to... I was thinking about uh, just butting these two colors up to each other, but I am going to have a slight color block, and it's going to be very small, just because I don't want these things. It's supposed to catch <laughs> and and hold on to those until you dump them, but it doesn't work. Um, so it doesn't really want to fold over on itself when you're putting it in the pocket. And this makes for a nice little journal spot because it's a simple, well, of course, up here too. It's a simple piece of paper. Uh, you won't be finding a pattern. There you go. One more piece of gold. This one's a little harder to see because it's actually framed in black. Okay, there we go. So the last thing are the two large inserts. These are three and three quarter by seven and a half, three and three quarter by seven and a half. And I'm not prepared to cover these because I really need to see how much paper is going to be left at the end. Um, so I'm just going to leave these in here and come back to those. I may not have it in this video. It may be something you have to go back and look for in the walkthrough because um, I have so much to upload. Um, and I hate to wait until the very, very end to upload these pages because it takes a whole day um, to get the album up. And I'd rather do it in increments, uh, which means sometimes when I go back to do these internal uh, elements, you have to see the walkthrough for them. But I gave you the cut. It's in the cut list. And you can set it aside and then cover it with your remaining paper, which is what I'm going to do. And it may mean that I have to do color blocking because I might not have um, strips that long. Okay. Isn't that pretty? I think it turned out great. I like the circle. It's a different, different idea. Of course, a rectangle still works here. Um, and that was three by five. This is what will be in the cut list. And this is a three... I think about a three and a half inch circle is what the black is. So um, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll be back soon with the rest of the album.